Hey, this is Brandon with Pickleball FX. Today I'm going to do a review of the Gearbox Pro paddles. So there's been a lot of interest in these. A lot of reviewers are speaking extremely high of them, but I have a little different opinion of them. I think they're good, but there is a little more nuance to it. I'm not going to dive too much into the technology of these. Gearbox sent me a slide deck of 27 slides, and it's just too much to get into. But you can summarize those slides into two main things. They made some changes to the core, and they now have a raw carbon fiber face. They call it something else, but it feels like a raw carbon fiber that we're seeing on a lot of other brands. So the series comes in four different paddles. They have two power versions and two control versions, an elongated and a, and a standard, or they call it their fusion shape of each version. So before we jump into the play test, there's a few specs I wanna point out on these paddles that I think are interesting. So starting with the elongated versions, the Pro Power version has a swing weight of 121 and a twist weight of 5.16 while the Pro Control Elongated has a swing weight of 123 and a twist weight of 5.01. The swing weights on these are a little bit higher. When you feel them, they do feel a little bit head heavy, but keep in mind these are edgeless, so they do cut through the air a little bit easier, which compensates for the higher swing weights, but they still feel a little head heavy when you pick them up. Then when you look at these twist weight numbers, they're extremely low. I have been playing with these for a couple of weeks and they do play above their twist weight, but they're still not exceptional and I'll talk about that in my play test. And then looking at the Fusion models, these are shorter than the elongated, but they're not wider. It's kind of interesting. So I'll just show you here. When you line these up side by side, you can see that the elongated has a little bit extra length, but it's not any wider. So typically you're gonna make a shorter paddle wider to increase the forgiveness of the paddle because you have more room to work with since you shrink the size of the head. But this is, but they decided not to do that and it's just a smaller head shape. When we look at the specs for these, it does reduce the swing weights, though the twist weights are about the same. So the swing weight for the Pro Power Fusion is 114, while the swing weight for the Control Fusion is 116, and the Control has a twist weight of 5.12, while the Power has a twist weight of 4.96. So again, super low twist weight numbers, but I'll speak to that here in a second. So let's go put these on the court and see how they play. I forgot to mention in my introduction that these paddles come with a price tag of $275. I'll do my best to assess their overall value considering their price and performance in my recommendations. So after drilling and playing with the paddles for over two weeks, here are my thoughts on how they play. We'll start by talking about the Pro Power models and then we'll talk about the Control. The Pro Powers are the most unique of the series. They are much more lively off the face than any paddle Gearbox has ever made, and they offer just as much power as anything else there and probably a little bit more. The power is there on drives, counters, and is always present and available to call on. The power is coupled with good spin. My spin tests were averaging just under 2000 RPMs, though I had some results spike above 2100. No question these paddles added more offense to my game in ways that I don't have with any other paddle. And if you're someone that can generate a lot of your own power, unlike me, then you can really rip these. My attacks from the mid court were more effective, my ability to put pressure on my opponents when they were back with rolls and overheads was improved, and my speed ups jumped on the other team quickly, and just about every offensive situation was better with this paddle. Although the power is available in the paddle, you have to find the middle of the paddle to access it, which is where the forgiveness of the paddle comes in. The paddles play more forgiving than what their twist weight suggests, and I do think that these are more forgiving than past SST cores from Gearbox, but I didn't think the sweet spot was as good as many others have stated, and they are still below average. I noticed a reduced sweet spot from side to side and some dead spots towards the tip of the paddle. In almost every review of these, the reviewer adds weight to the paddle, despite them saying it has a good sweet spot because it needs that weight to reduce the paddle twisting in your hands to access the power more often and reduce unforced errors. In order to get the stability in a good place, I ended up adding six grams of weight on each side, and this helped a lot with the forgiveness and consistency of the paddle, but this jumped the swing weights up. For example, this setup with my power elongated increased the swing weight from 121 to 127. Because we are working with a higher swing weight to start with, you can feel the bump in weight and you're not as quick at the net, which can cause issues. If you're just a little late on the ball, you're going to hit it higher, which when combined with its good power, sends things long or pops it up and gets you in trouble. However, the edgeless design does make the paddles move a little easier than you'd expect with that high of a swing weight. I imagine there are a lot of players where the extra weight won't slow them down, but there are also many others who are sensitive to weight, which makes this paddle less attractive to them since it needs weight to perform its best. So let's talk about controlling the ball with this paddle now. As with any power paddle, controlling it is going to be more difficult and with the bigger power on these, they weren't any different and they require more skill to dial in. When I had time to get my body in a good position for drops, resets, or dinks, then I was able to control the ball just fine, though I never felt fully confident with it. The paddle has a hollow feel to it, sort of like a Selkirk Power Air, but it's a lot quieter and less harsh feeling. I liked this feel more than the Power Airs, 
but its unique hollow feel reminded me of them. Because of the big power, you really have to be conscious of overswinging. It's very easy to hit a ball out when you speed it up or drive it. My control with the paddles improved the more time I gave them, but my defense and consistency took a hit that I wasn't able to get back during the time I play tested these. Whenever I was being attacked or if I was stretched out, it was difficult to slow the ball down and neutralize the point. And if you don't add lead tape, then you'll notice some errors on simple shots you typically make with a more forgiving paddle. I believe these paddles are more difficult to control than what many reviewers have stated. If you ever play someone using one of these, then it's not a bad strategy to attack them and just let the ball fly out. To finish with these, I'll quickly compare the elongated versus the fusion. The elongated has more reach, a better sweet spot from top to bottom, but it's a bit heavier while the fusion is shorter and faster. If you're nervous about the higher weight of the elongated, then I'd go with the fusion. But if you're not worried about weight, then I think the elongated version is better. I like that the fusion was easier to pack on lead tape without the swing weight getting away from you. But with the paddles having some dead spots towards the tip of the paddle, this made the fusion feel even shorter than it already was so there is some give and take there my recommendation for these is this they are certainly very fun to play with but i see them as more of a niche paddle that some players will love but don't see them as a great paddle for the masses players that love to play fast and rely on their offense to win points will enjoy these additionally if you're looking for maximum offensive power and have a well-developed soft game then you'll like these too but if you don't have a strong soft game and are prone to leaving the ball up even a little, then these paddles will not do you any favors and will bring out your weaknesses. For most players, I think the extra rallies you'll win with the bigger power of the paddles is less than the rallies you'll lose because of an increase in errors due to decreased accuracy and control. As for the cost of these being $275, I do think that these are unique and you won't find them anywhere else, which makes them worth the money for me if they have the qualities you're looking for. Now let's talk about the control versions. The control versions don't hit as hard as the power models, but they are similar in power to a 16mm thermoform paddle, so they still have some power of their own and feel lively off the face. I'm categorizing them as an all-court type paddle rather than control paddles. They have a really pleasant, plush, dense feel to them that's similar to a Ben Johns Hyperion paddle. I love that part about them. No question I was controlling these better than the power models because the ball doesn't come off as hot and the feel of the paddle is easier to connect with. I found my soft game much quicker and was more consistent with these in general. And then when it came to spin, I was also getting an average of just under 2000 RPMs, so they performed well there. The sweet spot on these felt a little better than the powers from side to side, though it was nothing drastic and they still had some dead spots towards the tip of the paddle. I thought these paddles needed lead as well to get the sweet spot in a good place, but the control models have heavier stock swing weights than the power models, so you want to tone back the amount of added weight a little. The combination of their nice feel, good control, and similar power level of a 16mm thermoform paddle make these attractive, but the reduced stability and heavier weight are drawbacks when you compare them to a thermoform paddle that is more forgiving, often lighter, and have a similar level of control. However, the thermoform paddles don't have the same pleasant feel as these. I like the way these play, however, whereas the power models are very unique and offer a new level of power, the control paddles are less differentiated from the market. You can find a lot of good all-court paddles for $100 to $150 less. However, it is somewhat unique that these paddles feel good at impact compared to that stiffer feel of Thermoform paddles that dominate the all-court type category, but that comes at a cost of less forgiveness and extra weight. So are these worth $275? I'm not so sure about that as I was with the power models. As for comparing the elongated shape to the fusion shape, I had the same thoughts as I expressed for the power versions. So there you go, that's my review. If you are interested in these, I do have links in the description. Any purchases you make through the link do help support the channel. And it's always difficult to fit all my thoughts in a video. So if you wanna see my more in-depth review, you can check out my written review, also link in the description. Thanks for watching.